Hello each and everyone. Welcome to Anamika's Edu Space. And now, today in this video lecture, we are going to study about the living world, which is chapter one of your class eleven. Okay, so let's get started. And before we start, let me tell you that all the PDF notes, that is the note which is provided in this video, is available in the Telegram channel, so that. You won't have to write or copy down the note. You can only just download the PDF, and it would be easy available to you on the Telegram channel that is Neat Meets. And the link of the Telegram channel is given here. I will also pin the link in the description below. And before getting started, make sure that you subscribe to our channel because today is the first video lecture. From now onwards, till one month or so, we are going to continue, and the routine is also available. In the Telegram channel, every day one chapter. So one day one chapter routine will be going on, and we are going to complete whole neat syllabus in one month. So yes, before starting, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is our Telegram channel, Facebook, and Instagram. You can follow us here. First is let us see the chapter overview. What we are going to study in this chapter that is living world. So first, we are going to cover up the topic that is characteristics of the living beings because there are two properties. One is the defining properties, and one is the not defining properties. Okay, or the characteristic properties. So we are going to study about the characteristic properties of the living beings. Okay. Next, we are going to study about the systematics. What is systematics, and what does it deals with? Next, we are going to study about the biodiversity that is in the variation of the organisms. Right, and then we are going to study about the taxonomy, and the last that is taxonomic age is very important. So the question which comes from this chapter in your NEET examination that is this point, the last point is very very important because mainly question comes from this taxonomical age only. Okay, and another uh, important part of this chapter would be your. characteristics of the living organisms in which some properties are very important okay so from there also question can be framed but this part is very very important so mark this part and read this part well and don't miss the points because most of the match the followings then your correct incorrect questions and your diagrammatic questions can also come from this part that is taxonomical aids okay so let's start life so in the world which we live it is full of so many habitats okay there will be land right they can be covered with water they can be covered with continuous sheet or stretch of the desert there can be forests there can be oceans mountains lakes etc etc and what goes on life actually goes on right so different habitat is the home to different organism right so different habitat forms the home to different organism and this different organism of the life forms is termed as the living organisms or living things now this brings about the diversity of the life which is found on earth but actually if we ask the question to ourselves what is actually life so according to ncert there can be two answers and the first answer is your scientific answer okay and the next answer is a psychological answer that is what is the purpose of life but as we are studying about science we will not go to this purpose but we will clearly study about the scientific purpose of living organisms okay so what is living as opposed to the non living so what is so whenever we are defining the light we need darkness to define the light similarly when you are defining life you need non living organisms to define the life so there will be some characteristics which will be actually opposing those non living organisms okay so those opposing characteristics of the non living organism will only define that this organism which is opposing the non living organism would be living in nature clear students now we are going to clearly know about the meaning of life 
so yes let us see life is the characteristic quality that differentiates between the inanimate that is the non living objects or non living organisms from the animate that is the living forms clear so in our coming discussion we will be finding the answer to these basic questions that why what is living what are the characters which is opposing to the non living etc etc okay so let's begin so here i have put the simplest form in which we can define the characteristics of a living being suppose for example growth is the main characters because living beings always grow in size if you plant a plant today in your garden tomorrow or onwards you will see that the leaves are coming out and it is also growing to in its shoot apex clearly so each an organism clearly grows okay so living beings that is plants growths all over their lifetime okay where is the animals grows only up to a certain age group clear so this is termed as the phenomenon of growth next is your metabolism what is metabolism the sum total of all the chemical reactions which is going on in the on your body that is known as metabolism because your body is a, is a living biological system so when it is a biological system then it means that your body is made up of some of the chemicals so as it is made up of chemicals so biochemical or the living chemical reactions will be going on inside your body or inside a living organism so that will be known as metabolism next characteristics is cellular organization so when you are defining a living organism it doesn't means that you are defining the organism by seeing the morphological or the external features but you are also seeing the difference or you are mentioning the difference which is present inside their cells because cells are very important and a plant cell is quite different from an animal cell that's why the plant and animal are not only different from morphologically but also they are different from anatomically too clear students next comes the main important thing that is reproduction so life to go on always needs a force or derivation so that force is provided by reproduction reproduction is such a phenomenon which helps a progeny to establish its own progeny in the living world clear so that is reproduction and through this process only the life cycle never stops and it goes on next is consciousness so when an organism is living the organism is always responding to the external environment where is non living things never respond to the external environment but a organism always responds so responding to the stimuli is known as your consciousness clear students now comes the last factor that is adaptation so when a living being is growing in a habitat or a niche so it is gradually adapting itself to the external environment may it be cold hot or a desert so it is establishing itself in the external environment so that is known as adaptation by the living organism but there is no adaptation which is found in the non living things that's why these characteristics are mainly considered as the characteristics or the fundamental basic plan of the of a living organism clear students now we will study it in details so growth so what is growth living organism always grow in size in mass and number of the cells of the individual that is growth so increasing in size okay that is increasing in mass and increasing in number these are both the twin characteristics of growth why because an living organism can grow by increasing the mass from outside to 
and from inside too. A non-living organism can grow by increasing in the mass only from the outside but not from the inside. So, growth may be of two types. How many types? Two types. One is intrinsic growth or internal growth and another is extrinsic growth or external growth. So, when a sand dune is growing by the deposition or accumulation of the material from the outside on its body surface, then that growth is known as external growth and which is seen mainly in the non-living organisms. Okay? But in case of the living organisms, you can only see intrinsic growth and intrinsic growth is formed from inside of your body. That means your cells are dividing, they are interacting among them, they are forming the tissues and the tissues are interacting among them, they are forming the organs, the organs are interacting among them, they are forming the organ system. So that is known as internal or growth from inside of your body. Clear students? Now comes the next thing that is cellular organization. So what is cellular organization? That is how your cell or the inside of your body is made up of. So, your cells are made up of or the arrangement or the compositions of the cells in your body is termed as cellular organization. Clear? Next is cellular organization can be of two types. First one is unicellular. Unicellular organisms have a single cell. There is no complexity in their structure. There is very, they are very simple but the functions they perform are very complex. Their cell is very simple but their functions is very complex. For example, amoeba. Clear? Next is multicellular organism. So, multicellular organism are very complex from their body plan. Okay? They have multiple cells to perform different, different functions. Some cells will be performing reproduction, whereas some cells will be performing nutrition, whereas some cells will be performing respiration and other metabolic activities as it is providing respective functions. But unicellular organisms, what will happen? Only one cell is there and the one cell is doing everything. That means the function is complicated, the function is complex but the structure is simple. Clear students? So, for the example of multicellular organism starts from the primitive one that is hydra. Clear? Next comes the main important thing that is reproduction. So, what is reproduction? Reproduction is the process of producing young individuals of the living things. Okay? So, there are two types of reproduction. The first one is asexual reproduction. So, asexual reproduction does not involve the fusion of the gametes as we all know and the example is amoeba. So, amoeba does asexual reproduction by fission. Okay? So, what is fission? Fission means the splitting up of the mother cell into two daughter cells. Okay? So, this is the mother cell. When the mother cell splits up into two daughter cells, then it is known as fission. And the next is your sexual reproduction. So, what is sexual reproduction? Sexual reproduction involves the fusion of the two gametes. For example, the humans. Here, two gametes are there. One is the male gamete. Okay? Another is the female gamete. And that's why this is known as dimorphism. Why it is known as dimorphism? Because two different type of morphological characters are available. One is the male character, one is the female character. The male and the female both fuses or the male and the female gametes both fuses and forms the zygote and then the zygote forms the embryo. Clear? Now comes the adaptation. So, what is known as adaptation? The genetic mechanism of an organism to survive or thrive and reproduce by constantly enhancing itself. So, when the nature selects you, the nature selects you when you are fit with the nature. When you are fit in the 
environment when you are fitting yourself in this environment gradually by your mechanism which is happening genetically so that is known as adaptation okay by birth you are getting some exclusive characters some specific characters some particular characters by which you can enhance your life on this living world so that is known as adaptation that is known as getting or pursuing a particular character which makes you different from the rat race clear next is adaptation can be two types the first one is a long term adaptation so what is a long term adaptation long term adaptation means permanent changes which is going on in response to the changing in the environment for example the human birds it's changing right so that is a long term adaptation and what is another type of adaptation is short term adaptation short term means for a short time being you are uh, going for uh, external sleep you are going for a uh, uh, you are going for a summer sleep or you are going for a winter sleep next is your metabolism so what is metabolism metabolism is the series of chemical processes which is catalyzed by the enzyme occurring within the body of the living beings so it is catalyzed by enzyme and as i already said it is a biochemical process in which the chemicals are being converted into another chemical and actually the energy which is present underneath this chemical is getting converted and it is getting specified and it is being utilized somewhat by the body and somewhere the energy is given out so there will be two type of metabolism as we can see first one is your catabolism so the process of the breakdown of the complex substances okay into the simpler ones that is catabolism and another is anabolism so the process of formation of the complex substances from the simpler ones for example photosynthesis is known as your anabolism okay now you answer in the comment section that the process of catabolism requires energy okay or the process of anabolism requires energy which one requires energy tell me in the comment section below okay catabolism is actually respiration so respiration means breakdown of the food correct students yes so when we are breaking down the food that means we are consuming the energy that means we are needing the energy we are getting the we are extracting the energy from that food okay so energy here in this process energy is not required but energy is prepared from this process okay so it is giving out us it is giving us energy but in anabolism when photosynthesis we are doing photosynthesis that means the plant is taking sunlight the plant is taking other energies so that's why that's why what happens that here the energy is consumed okay here the energy is given out here the energy is taken in so in anabolism we will write a small letter that is in in and here in catabolism we will write out okay in catabolism energy is given out whereas in anabolism the energy is taken in clear students now we will study about the most important thing that is consciousness consciousness is another defining characters of the living organisms okay or the living beings why it is another defining character because only living organism can sense its environment if you keep a living organism may it be plant the plant will also get to know whether it is kept in hot and humid climate or whether it is kept in cold climate so it is able to sense its environment so that is very important which is present in the living organism that is consciousness okay only the human beings okay or the homo sapiens or the clever or the wisest ones only have consciousness that is known as self consciousness 
they were they are not only aware of their environment other organisms are aware of their outside environment but human beings are also aware about their own selves about their own presence in this earth so that is very important that is none other than the human beings have the self consciousness in them now from the consciousness an example comes that is irritability so what is irritability irritability means when i am causing harm to you or when i am causing when i am disturbing you so when the external stimuli or the or the force from the environment is disturbing an organism then the living organism always reacts to it or reacts against it that means if you are placing a plant in the dark region okay so the plant will always try to move towards the light so movement towards the light shows that it it the darkness was causing irritability to the plant clear students so living beings also responds to the external stimuli varies non living beings do not respond now we have completed all the basic characteristics of the living beings clear so we have completed all the basic characteristics nothing is left is it so do you think so no one thing is left that is thermoregulation so living beings those who are present in our living world has richness of variety and also they can regulate their own body temperature okay so they can maintain their internal temperature and whatever may be the temperature in the external environment so if the external environment is cold it won't get that the living being the body of the living or the living system also gets cold if the external temperature gets cold the living being can also maintain its internal body temperature so that is known as thermo regulation that means they can regulate the heat which is produced in their body they can trap the heat in their body when the external conditions are harsh for them clear so first is heat stroke okay here also two points will get heat stroke heat stroke means increase in the body temperature above the normal level so when it is when it is getting very very cold then what actually the living being does it increases its body temperature so sometimes it increases his body temperature so much that a person gets stroke okay next is hypothermia so what is hypothermia hypothermia is the decrease in body temperature below the normal level what is the normal level of the body temperature there the normal level of the body temperature is 37 degree celsius okay in room temperature it is 37 degree celsius so sometimes it gets lower below the normal level of the body temperature then it is known as hypothermia clear students we have finally completed the characteristics of living beings so there are lots of characteristics of living beings no there are not lots of characteristics there are only six characteristics six main characteristics that is growth cellular organization adaptation reproduction consciousness and metabolism and among these characteristics or in these characteristics there comes lots of divisions and as we are studying in higher classes we are going to study this in details what did we learn now we will quite quickly sum up all those things now what is living first question would be what is living clear so there would be some characteristics of the living first you will define that ma'am you have told us the first characteristics is growth so yes dear the first characteristics is growth the second characteristics is reproduction and growth and reproduction are two mutually exclusive events rock okay. is your number 3 is metabolism number 4 is cellular organization okay number 5 is consciousness you tell me in the comment section below that growth and reproduction are what type of properties can we define an organism by this can we define a living organism by growth and reproduction yes or no in the chat section quickly 
and can we define this so which are the defining properties and which are the not defining properties you have to mention so let me say that growth and reproduction are not the defining properties okay where is the metabolism cellular organization consciousness are the defining properties okay guys so why these are known as the defining properties let me explain you so growth and reproduction are not the defining properties because an organism can grow or cannot grow but it is living okay because there is increase in the cell number okay there will be increase in the cell number it cell number it cannot grow in their mass or it cannot be tall somewhere it cannot reach it cannot reach that height but it is increasing in number cell division is going on that means cell process is going on metabolism is going on so metabolism will always go on on a living organism now you will say that ma'am if a living organism is grown in a laboratory okay where external conditions are given okay external conditions are provided and the living organism is growing on the laboratory okay uh, as it is written on your ncert that metabolism is a defining feature of all the living organism without any exception an isolated living metabolic reaction in vitro that is in laboratory are not living but surely living reaction what is the meaning of this line so the meaning of this line is the organism which is cultured in the laboratory under the external conditions or carried out in the lab it's considered non living but they will be living as they are going under or inside or um going on a living body so as it is going or as the reactions or laboratory reactions are being performed in the living body so where they are being performed they are being performed in the living body that is it is performed in the living system and that's why all the metabolism or the all the chemical metabolic reactions are termed as a living reaction despite of being controlled under laboratory environment clear students so in vitro reactions are also living reactions clear next comes the cellular organization so cellular organization is also termed as the defining properties of the living organism and why it is termed by why but why reproduction is not termed because there are some species like the mules okay like the mules there are some species like the worker bees who are female but infertile and there's some infertile females or males in the human population too so they don't reproduce but are they not living they are also considered as living that's why we cannot consider reproduction as the defining properties of the living organism and reproduction in case of the unicellular organism like bacteria or the amoeba that means increase in the number okay so the increase in the number that is increase in the number can be confused with the growth so sometimes in case of the unicellular we always confuse the reproduction with the growth of the organism okay so sometimes in case of the unicellular organism the reproduction and growth both becomes synonymous okay that means the same meaning same thing if it is reproducing and increasing it is cell number that means it is also growing and the organism is also reproducing so that is synonymous in case of the unicellular organism but in case of the asexual reproduction in the multicellular organism so what happens the fungi always reproduces by the asexual spores okay eastern hydra reproduces by budding where is planaria can regenerate its body and can recover its lost part so if pan planaria looks like this so planaria can if you cut the planaria body from middle or from the neck region or from the head region so it can also regenerate its part and this is known as regeneration so this is an important question that who or uh, name a organism who can regenerate its part and the answer will be planaria 
Next comes about the filamentous algae Protonema. So they actually grows by the fragmentation. Okay, Protonema of the Moses filamentous al algae grows by form form fragmentation. So reproduction cannot also be considered as a defining feature. Okay, and why growth cannot be considered as a defining feature? Because the living beings can also grow. Okay, and the non-living can grow too. As I already mentioned, you the living things grow external and internal both growth are there. Where is non-living things always grow externally? So as the non-living things is also growing and increasing in the mass, or the sand deposition is increasing the sand dune day by day. So growth is also not the characteristics of the living organism. Okay, I mean it is a characteristic, but it is not a defining property. Okay, next comes the cellular. organization so one cell when it will be one cell it will be unicellular one it will be many cell it will be multicellular okay and all the living organisms are composed of cell there is no exception in it so when there will be no exception then only there will be they will be known as the defining properties so there is no exception in these cases in no exception if you have any queries any related ncert line which you are not able to understand in this cases so you can surely write it down in the comment section i will clear your doubt immediately now so if you have any doubt i am following the chat section please do write down in the chat section okay next is cellular organization so cellular organization is termed as the defining property because all living beings are composed of cells okay now we'll say that ma'am why consciousness is classified as the defining property because a living being always respond to stimuli now we will say that ma'am the brain dead person or the person who is in coma is it considered as a living being or a non living being which is also a contradictory question which is present on your ncert so the answer to this question is very simple that coma patient you know the answer yourself only the coma patient is physically living okay because the systems are being controlled as i already said in case of the metabolism that the control is done by the external environment or the environmental conditions but it is going inside a living body or it is performed in the living body that's why it would be termed as a living reaction similarly in case of the coma patient too the metabolism is performed by the external machines inside the living organism only that's why the coma patient is physically living but as it is not interacting with the external environment neither it is responding to the external stimuli that's why social behaviorally and mentally the patient is dead that's why it is told as brain dead because brain is the point which tells you how to respond or how to exp uh, how to react to the external stimuli right that's why as the brain is not functioning the patient is in coma so the patient is termed as brain dead and the main characteristics is that response to stimuli which is nearly absent or negligible so response to the stimuli is not there so it is brain dead but the physically the person is living in this world clear students so that that was the answer now we are going to the next point that is biodiversity so what is biodiversity biodiversity bio means living okay and diversity means variation so biodiversity can be defined any variation of a living organism which we can calculate in a given area that is the degree of the variability among the organism now we'll study about systematic so what is systematics actually according to your ncert so systematics is nothing but the study of the relationship among the two individual you may clearly say the evolutionary relationship okay so if i am studying about the reptiles then i am studying about the birds okay so as i'm studying about the reptiles and then i'm studying about the birds and when i'm establishing a relationship between the reptiles and the birds then this type of relationship of studying it is it in a sequential 
sequentially systematic way is only known as systematics okay that is one by one gradually you are studying about this okay so systematics is the word which is a latin word and which has been defined or derived from by linnaeus and this was used in a book which is known as systema nature okay so this line is very very important okay this line is very very important that who gave this book it is also written in your ncert that is linear the study of the biodiversity to classify the diversity on the basis of the following three fields that is identification classification nomenclature okay and another field is there that is characterization when you are identifying a organism you are writing the identify identify characters uh in self in the identification only but characterization or characterizing the organism or studying where the organism can actually lie based on its similarities and dissimilarities of the characteristics is known as the characterization of the organism okay so actually four fields are there but we study the three main fields that is classification nomenclature and identification okay so this was all about the systematic the ancient or the early life people who had a curiosity to know about the organism okay and actually they only knew about the organism or the uses or the diseases of the organism only theek hai मतलब उन लोगों को सिर्फ यूज से ही ऑर्गेनिज्म के यूज से ही मतलब था इसके आगे पीछे कुछ मतलब नहीं था कि शीप इज यूज फॉर ऊल दिस कैटल इज यूज फॉर गिविंग मिल्क दिस बर्ड इज यूज फॉर लेइंग एग्स सो और दे वेर ऑलवेज कंसर्न विथ फूड क्लोदिंग एंड शेल्टर दैट्स वाई दे ओनली फाइंडेड रिसोर्सेज टू नो अबाउट सच ऑर्गेनिज्म और सच एनिमल्स विच कैन हेल्प देम टू डू सो ओके बट now the when the, there is modern classification or modern taxonomy so what we learn in modern taxonomy actually we consider the cell structure of the organism we consider the external internal environment of the uh, external internal structure of the organism we consider the developmental process of the organism and along with it we also consider the ecological information that is where the organism lives what the organism eats where the organism resides so each and everything we consider here okay in the modern taxonomy but in the earliest classification or in the earliest taxonomy only the uses of various organism was known now we come to the different fields of systematics that is identification what is identification so when you are studying about a certain organism you first need to identify the organism that where it does lie in which unit it does lie in which taxonomic group or which taxonomic rank okay so that is known as identification the correct name the correct position uh, the establishment of the organism in the classification system when it was established when this organism was inculcated in the uh, uh, in the system okay so this is known as identification now to identify the organism you need characters so what will be the characters the first character which you need that is a morphologically or how the organism looks okay so look is very very important next is the anatomy of the organism if it is a dead organism then you will see how, where the position of the organs are present how the cell structure is present so that would be a great help in the identifying the organism so these help are example of the keys so keys is a alternate characters which is found in the organism and organism can be identified by selecting and eliminating the characters which is present in the key so its second process is classification when you have identified a certain organism now you must group that organism or place the organism into certain groups so certain groups or hierarchy level starts from the kingdom kingdom is the highest category or the highest rank all the organism can come under this may it be algae plantae may it be animalia may it be fungi may it be protistans everything can be come, come everything can come under kingdom because it is the large umbrella type highest category or the highest rank okay and it that is classifying the organism involves the scientific grouping of the organism into convenient categories of the taxa okay 
uh, so there will be some observable characters that is the morphological characters there will be some fundamental characters that is the functional or the anatomical characters okay now various categories will be arranged from the decreasing order decreasing orders means from the big one to the small one okay so from big one we are going for that is from the kingdom which is the highest category or the highest rank then comes the phylum phylum in case of the animal and uh, in case of the plant it is division then comes the class after the phylum there will be different classes or different classes which is based on the observable characters and then comes the order aggregates of the families in the order or different families in the order then comes the families like the cat family the dog family the canidae and the felidae and then the genus okay then the last one is species so where you will find the most observable characters or most closely related characters so most closely related characters found on the species itself okay and then we will go to the genus so in the genus we will find the less observable characters in the families the organisms will be defined differently vegetatively and reproductively so similarly the division is done from the kingdom phylum class order family genus and species okay next we will go we are going to study about the nomenclature so what is nomenclature now after the classification of the organism when we have identified the organism we have classified the organism we have put the organism in a certain group now you need to name the organism so naming of the organism is known as nomenclature but this name would be a specific and a particular name which which would be used worldwide so that name is known as a scientific name scientific name is a is a general and a universal name which is used everywhere okay for example uh, binomial nomenclature so what is binomial nomenclature binomial nomenclature means that a specific particular format is there two word format what is two word format the first will consider genus name and the second will be the specific name specific name the specific name cannot be similar the specific name always varies from organism to organism may though it be a same genus so magnifera indica magnifera is indica is only the name of the mango which is found in the india that is indian species of mango is known as magnifera indica polynomial polynomial nomenclature is a naming a system in more than two words so there may be three words for naming a system like rosa sinensis okay and then sinensis so that is that will be a polynomial system you are naming the organism but you are not following the two word system you are following the three word system and if we follow the three word system then it is known as trinomial system okay and trinomial system also comes up under under the polynomial system okay uh, the first two words is similar as the binomial system but the third word is representing sub species okay this is the species this is the genus so three words can also be there in this nomenclature system which is trinomial system of nomenclature clear students next you may must learn some codes of the binomial nomenclature so what are the code of this binomial nomenclature to avoid any errors and is the international code of botanical nomenclature who has named the animals is the international code of zoological nomenclature comes the international code of the viral nomenclature then bacterial nomenclature and cultivated plants so crop plants are different from the plants in the wild okay these are the crop plants these are the bacteria and these are the viruses so the viruses has been named by the international code of the viral nomenclature clear students now comes this type types of speciation in the nomenclature icbn that is the international code of botanical nomenclature very good so icbn has described them into following types that is speciation in the nomenclature has been described as holotype isotype neotype syntype paratype lectotype this is just for your information extra from your ncert you must know this little bit of things because 
it can somewhat ask or it can be present in the match the following and if you don't know the definition or the meaning of this then you cannot answer the other things which are present on ncert so to for the elimination process also you need some like little bit extra information which is pres not present on your ncert okay so what is holotype holotype means a species in which no, uh, a new description is established okay so first there is prototype species was there primitive species was there but now the species has been a new description is added and the species has become a holotype species okay a new characters has been added to the description of the species so that was that is holotype species isotype species means same name as the holotype so uh, if it is a holotype species then it is having the same name or the similar name as the holotype species next the new type species what is new type species new means new okay new nomenclature type of the holotype is not available okay so that is new type species next Seen type species is any of the two or the more species cited by an author where there is no holotype species. Okay, so where there will be no holotype or the primitive organism of that species, but there the there will be similar organism of that species. Okay, next is paratype species. Paratype species mean specimen described along with the holotype species. Okay, and then comes the lectotype species. Isotype paratype specimen described along with the holotype species will be known as the lectotype species. Now there will be different examples of this holotype species. You can consider the example, but I have not told any example because I do not do not want to uh, extend this to a large extent. But yes, you must know the definition of each and everything, uh, which would help you to answer some of the extra questions outside from NCERT. Now coming to the taxonomy for which we are waiting. So taxonomy is the principle or procedures in which we have identification, nomenclature, and classification of the organism. It reflects the natural and the phylogenetic relationship among the organism. It also provides the details of the external and the internal structure, cellular structure, ecological information of the organism. So this details is considered under modern taxonomy. Now we will ask that, ma'am, what is the difference between the systematic and taxonomy? Taxonomy is studying of the organism of a particular group. Okay, studying organism of particular group or grouping the organism and then studying a particular group. But systematics is studying one by one after another. Suppose you started with uh, uh, started with the Chordates, right? You started first with the amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals. So like this, you are studying one by one. So that is known as systematics. And what is taxonomy? You are start. You have started with mammals, and then you have gone to prototheria, metatheria, eutheria, and you are studying about that particular mammal group only. So that is taxonomy. Clear, student? Term taxonomy was coined by A. P. D. Candouli in eighteen hundred and thirteen. Okay, in the match, the following this is important. Next is taxon. What is taxon, or what the word taxon actually means? So the word taxon actually means taxon is a singular word. Let me tell you, the taxon is a singular word, and the plural word of the, this taxon is taxa. Okay. So taxon represents a rank of each category, which is referred to as the unit of classification. The taxon was first int introduced by the ICBN, that is International Code of Botanical Nomenclature, during 1956. Now, according to Mayer, about Mayer, you have to know who is Mayer. The Mayer is the Darwin of 20th century. And why Mayer is known as the Darwin of 20th century, which is present in front of your NCERT book only? So that is because. Darwin had a drawback that is the origin of the species. Darwin has told everything about the species. How can the species establish in the environment? What is the fetus? How can they grow? They grow by reproduction, etc., etc., variation, etc., etc. Each and everything Darwin has told. But Darwin has not mentioned the origin that from where the species is actually coming up, from where the species is actually growing. So that part is not mentioned by Darwin, which is mentioned and continued by. Mayor. So Mayor has established the evolutionary relationships of the species among different groups of the organism. 
ओके सो दैट्स व्हाई मेयर इज कंसीडर्ड द डार्विन ऑफ ट्वेंटी एथ सेंचुरी ओके इन नाइनटीन एंड सिक्सटी फोर वॉट मेयर एनी ग्रुप और एनी रैंक दैट इज सफिशियंटली डिस्टिंग ऑट टू बी वर्दी ऑफ बींग असाइंड एज अ डिफाइंड कैटेगरी मीन्स वॉट इज टैक्स वॉट इज टैक्स और वट इज टैक्सन टैक्सन इज द यूनिट ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन ओके नथिंग मोर देन दैट नथिंग लेस देन दैट इन सिंपल वर्ड्स वी कैन से दैट टैक्स एंड रेफर्स टू द ग्रुप ऑफ सिमिलर जेनेटिकली रिलेटेड इंडिविजुअल्स इट मे बी द किंगडम इज अ टैक्सम फाइलम इज अ टैक्सम देन योर जेनस इज अ टैक्सम फैमिली इज अ टैक्सन स्पीशीज इज अ टैक्सन ऑर्डर इज अ टैक्सन क्लास इज अ टैक्सन so everything is a taxon which is having a distinct characters of that related particular rank or taxonomic group or category clear students now we come to the detailed discussion about the kingdom so what is kingdom kingdom is the highest category in the taxonomy a kingdom includes all the characters which shares a distinguished characters okay so as we study about the kingdom diversified characters the species has the most particular characters okay clear next phylum or division phylum in case of the yes animals division in case of the plants it was given by cruvier or richler it is a taxonomic category higher than the class and it is lower rank to the kingdom okay so how how we will define the phylum phylum is the next higher category okay so what you will write according to ncert phylum is the next higher category so who was the first higher category kingdom was the first higher category the term phylum or division is commonly employed for the plants it is commonly employed for animals it is commonly employed for plants it consists of more than one classes having some similar correlated characters okay so what does the phylum contains the phylum contains classes of correlated characters okay c c c so phylum contains what phylum contains 3c clear next class what is class class was given by linnaeus for example mammalia okay our class the class mammalia what it contains it contains monkey gorilla and gibbon it's any major category which is included into the related orders okay so class includes the related orders next comes the orders which is again provided by linnaeus it is a group of one or more related families and some characters which is correlated characters of the families are present which are lesser in number as compared to the family on genera that means from order we are actually diversifying okay actually till the family there was particular characters but after the family we are actually diversifying okay next after the order we will go to the family okay so in the family it is a group of the related genera with less number of similarities as compared to the genus and the species all the genera of the family have some common or the correlated features they are separable from the genera so how can we define family according to our ncert so family is the next category where a, there is related genera present okay with still less number of similarities as compared to the genus and species so this line is very important and another line is very important that so the most important point that is taxonomical aid from which the questions are actually asked in your neat examination so this part is very important this includes the techniques and the procedures and the stored information that are useful in identification classification of the organism so here what happens the taxonomical aid aid means actually help so it is providing you help to identify your organism to classify the organism okay so here what happens the uh, if you have a collection of something previously then when you, when new organism is introduced into that population you can easily see that whether the characters you can easily check the whether the characters of this new organism is similar to the previous population or not clear so these characters can be seen by the collection so first collection is herbarium so when you are collecting some plant or plant specimen and you are drying it and you are placing it in the sheet uh, in a sheet and then you are covering the sheets and then you are writing the respective name scientific name uh, then each and every uh, important point about that particular plant and then you are 
preserving that plant you are drying that plant and preserving that plant and keeping a uh, lots of millions of species plant specimen like that in a storehouse then that is known as herbarium okay then when you are not only collecting the plant but also the animal specimen and the solid particles of the animal specimen like the fossils you are collecting the fossils you are collecting the molecular dna's of the uh, of the of the animals or the plants and you are preserving it uh, in a place so that is known as museum then comes the keys keys are the leads which helps you to identify which which are actually the lines which helps you to identify the organism based on their similarity or dissimilarity you keep a check on those organism and then comes the manual of the catalog manual of the catalog provides you that they are separable from the genera of a related family by the important differences in both the vegetative and the reproductive features okay like the cat family which is known as felidae right and the dog family which is known as canidae okay now the dog family is also known as the lion family and the cat family is also known as the tiger family isliye to bola jata hai ki tiger ki mausi kaun hai tiger ki mausi cat hai next genus genus that is termed is given by john ray it comprises a group of related species which has more characters in common in comparison to the species of the other genera okay in other words genus is the aggregate okay or the collection of the closely related species so here we are going towards the particular characters next species the last or the lowest and the real category which is present okay species is the real category which is present so species is a taxonomic studies which is considered a group of individuals and with similarities and similarities such as species by john ray it is given it is the lowest or the basic or the real i have also said an, another word that is real or the basic or the lowest category and in which one or more individuals of the population are present and their particular characters are considered so this is species okay gives you information of the identification or the names of the species which is found in an area so if you visit sundarban okay and that you will be given a manual or a catalog so that you are able to figure out that yes here royal bengal tiger is found here some uh, crocodiles are found here some deers are found like that you will be able to clarify that these organism or these plants are present in this particular area so that is manual or catalog next is monograph okay so what is monograph monograph contains information about only one taxon may it be containing the information about kingdom fungi okay or it is containing information of class mammalia so that is monograph next comes the botanical garden or zoological garden so somewhat how it happens the animals in the wild specimens are getting extinct in the forest due to the less resources available there okay so those animals and the plants are conserved in the botanical garden or the zoological garden this is actually ex situ conservation but it actually helps the organism on preventing them from ex being extinct in the wild okay so it contains the living classic uh, collection of the plant and animals in the condition similar to their natural habitat is provided and the living organisms are considered and in other that is museum and herbarium non living or the dead are preserved okay clear students so now we are going to study about what is the importance of this taxonomic aid or taxonomic help and how does they help so they actually store and preserve the information okay for the visitors for the ones who want to know for the curious person and this helps in the prime resource because this forms a primary resource of the taxonomic studies if you study or research about uh, if you want to research about the organism in details so previously you need some help that from where it was formed what is the origin of the species what is the evolution relationships of the species so each and everything is provided in the taxonomic aid okay which would help you a lot in culturing or re researching about the species in details for your future references and next is these are also very important in the training of the systematics okay when you are establishing a relationship between two 
uh, different organism related to different groups. Okay, when you are naming or classifying the organism, when you are collecting the organism from the fields and you are using some reference. So it is very important that you visit a herbarium or the museum where you will find the actual specimens. Okay, from the fields which is collected and it would be helping you in classifying the, or, or the classifying these organism or knowing the name about that organism. Clear, students? So that's why. Taxonomical aids are very very important. So now we have completed the whole chapter. Finally, we have completed the whole chapter. Now you can get the PDF note in the Telegram channel. So make sure that you join our Telegram as soon as possible. That is Neat Meets. Here is the link. You can also follow the link and join the Telegram. And make sure that you subscribe to our channel now. So as you subscribe to our channel, from tomorrow we are going to start the next chapter. That is Chapter One of Class Twelve. That is reproduction. So tomorrow there will be a video lecture on reproduction. Make sure that you. don't miss it and if you like this video then make sure that you like this video comment down below your queries and you also share this video with your friends and join our telegram channel and be the part or the member of our group that is telegram neat meets which is always there for your help on your neat preparation so we are starting the starting everything now and we are going to complete each and everything thanks for watching this video and please do visit again